Because we live in a world where we are told we are the leaders of tomorrow and the politicians of the day have ensured that that tomorrow never comes. <laughs> Let us today tell the politicians of the day that the tomorrow they have been talking about is today. We live in a continent today where, as the young man has said, our young women upon attaining puberty cannot afford sanitary pads. But our public servants have iPads which they do not know how to use. <laughs> we live in a continent today where our leaders who preside over our health sectors have no faith in the health sector when they are sick and their families are sick, they run away to seek treatment in Germany, in France, in the United Kingdom, in South Africa, and India. Even our health ministers don't have faith in our health departments. We live in a country and countries today where the political leadership have no faith in the education sector. They bring unto us what they call free primary education or universal primary education but they can never dare take their children to those schools. We live in countries where we claim that agriculture is the backbone of our societies but we do not use technology to produce crops. Africans are dying younger than they were dying 50 years ago. And I want to submit to you that corruption is the source of all these. I had the privilege of serving as the director of the Kenyan Anti-Corruption Commission. But it would appear that I did not understand my brief well. Upon being appointed, I assumed that my mandate was to go out there and fight the corrupt. But the truth was that I was not supposed to fight corruption. I was supposed to appear to be fighting corruption. <laughs> Immediately, me and my team tried to fight corruption. The parliamentarians in their wisdom and in my own view, in their lack of wisdom, used the occasion of the amendment of the law to disband the organization and to send myself and my four directors out of office. The history of anti-corruption crusaders in Africa is one and the same. Their mortality rate in office is very short. Before I was victimized, before my victimization, Nuhuri Badu before me had been victimized in Nigeria. Before I was victimized, McCarthy had been victimized in South Africa and his scorpions disbanded. Before I was victimized, my equivalent in Malawi had been victimized. Before I had been victimized, my equivalent in Zambia had been victimized. It would appear that in Africa, if you serve your full term, it is because you have refused to fight corruption. So the question that we must ask here and now, in an occasion, on an occasion such as this, what must Africa do going forward? The question is, are we going to gain Africa by mere pronouncements? Or we must change ourselves. We must change our behavioral DNA so that we are no longer attracted to that which is good, bad, and evil. The question is, are we ready? The question is, do we say with our mouth what do we, we do not believe in our hearts? The question is, are we going to wait for outsiders to tell us to do that which we ought to have done? The question is, are we prepared to sacrifice our lives for the, that which is good and right? The question is, beyond the comfort of Africana, are we going to roll up our sleeves and meet the poor and the desperate and the oppressed in Karamoja? The question is, are we ready? If you look at Africa today, how is it that our minerals are taken away from us, from the Democratic Republic of Congo? Our oil is taken away from us. Our agricultural products are taken away from us, and they are given to those who have. 
If you look at us today, sitting in this assembly, if there was a miracle to say anything that is not produced in Africa disappear, all of us would be naked. Because the clothes that you wear, none of them are made in Uganda. Because the ties that you wear, none of them is made in Uganda. Even the underwear that you wear, none of it is made in Uganda. The question is, are we children of a lesser God? No, we are not. But we have allowed ourselves to be corrupted in our morals and in our ways. Our leaders steal from us and they keep money in Europe and America. They can't keep it in Africa. The question is, for how long shall we allow this to happen?